Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You're all very welcome this afternoon to the LIT conferring. My name is Terry Toomey, and I'll be your master of ceremonies for the afternoon. I'd like just to say a, a special welcome to people who've traveled from Nigeria, Malaysia, Oman, and India to be here today. So thank you for coming. This conferring ceremony is streaming live, so if somebody couldn't get here today, if you want to send them a message, they can watch it online. A couple of housekeeping items before we begin. There are seven emergency exits from this auditorium, one to the right and one to the left of the stage, two in each of the glass walls at the side, and one at the back where you just came in earlier on. Could I also ask you to please switch off all mobile phones before we begin? The formal proceedings begin today with the academic procession. I now invite all present to please stand for the academic procession. Please be seated. I will begin by introducing the members of the conferring panel to you. To my right is Maria Kine, Dean of the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, and Professor Vincent Canaan, President of Limerick Institute of Technology. I now call on Maria Kine, Dean of the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, to address you. Good afternoon, everybody. Graduates, President, Registrar, academic staff, sponsors, and guests. You are welcome to this graduation ceremony for the Department of the Built Environment and the Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering. The graduation ceremony today 
recognizes your achievement in attaining a level of education reflected in the awards that you will be presented with this afternoon. And I offer you all my heartiest congratulations. Today is a recognition of your achievements, what you have worked for, and you have earned the right to be here. The departments of Built Environment and Mechanical and Automobile Engineering form two of the five departments in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology. The other three departments are Applied Science, Electrical and Electronic Engineering and Information Technology. The faculty is one of the largest centres of education in the STEM disciplines in Ireland and has over 2,400 full-time learners, over 600 students on evening continue, continuing education programmes and also delivers programmes to over 500 apprentices. I would like to thank the heads of department, Mr. Pat Gill and Dr. Philip Ryan, for their support to the faculty, to their departments, to their staff and their students. Some faculty highlights from the last 12 months include the achievement by the Department of Applied Science of ongoing approval and revalidation of all programmes for a further five years as the outcome of the department programmatic review. All programmes were modified to ensure relevance to industry with modern curricula using appropriate technologies. A successful accreditation visit by Engineers Ireland in June led to the achievement of accreditation of 13 level 6, 7 and 8 engineering programmes across the faculty. First time accreditation was achieved for two level 8 programmes and two level 7 programmes. Faculty staff have established close links with the Precision Turned Parts Manufacturing Association who are our partners in the development and delivery of precision engineering programs. A very successful manufacturing solutions event was organized in LIT in partnership with the PTMA and the UK-based Gage Tool Manufacturing Association in June, where over 100 Irish and UK exhibitors displayed their products to over 600 visitors. Two conferences were organised by the Department of Information Technology. An ICT and Education conference was organised on the Thurlis campus in April and a European Social Media conference was organised on the Moylish campus in June. The faculty has been at the forefront of new programme development and reinvigorating of its existing programmes to meet the needs of industry in our region. We actively participate on the Midwest Regional Skills Forum and collaborate with the Regional Skills Forum Manager to identify and respond to current and future skills needs. We have a long tradition of providing craft-based apprenticeship programs in the faculty. The Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering have developed and are now running the first new engineering apprenticeship program in Ireland. And this morning, we graduated here in LIT, the first new engineering apprenticeship graduates in Ireland. So it's been a very successful day for the faculty. Four other apprenticeship programs have been approved by the Apprenticeship Council to develop new apprenticeships in Manufacturing Data Integration Engineer, Advanced Quantity Surveyor, Precision Machining and Quality Control Technician, Aircraft Leasing Practitioner, and we expect to offer the first of these next January. The development of new programs has led to the validation of the following new awards. Three level eight ab initio BSCs in clinical technology, environmental management in agriculture, and energy management. Two level eight ab initio BNGs in automobile engineering and transport management, and precision engineering a level 8 add-on BNG in agricultural mechanisation, special purpose awards in aviation and in motion graphics. The faculty continues to work with our industry partners to promote our programmes to potential students. A successful Limerick for Engineering and Limerick for IT showcase 
was held in March in Shannon Airport to inform students of the employment and career prospects in the world of STEM. The 2017 LIT Graduate Outcome Survey found that 90% of the faculty graduates are in full-time employment or further study, with 72% employed in the Midwest region. A successful Engineers Week and Construction Day was held again this year, where students from 45 second level schools and their 60 engineering teachers visited LIT and were given presentations on an engineering topic and demonstrations of engineering and built environment laboratory active learning classes. Springboard funding was achieved this year to support students on higher diploma IT programs and a building information modeling special purpose award. I would like to express my gratitude to our industry partners who have provided us with state-of-the-art equipment which will enhance the educational experience of our students. Staff from both departments continue to engage with the campus master planners to provide advice on the design of the Kuna campus for our engineering programs. Today, the faculty are very proud to be conferring one master's by research at this session. The faculty has been very successful in securing research funding again this year to support full-time professional researchers across a range of topics. Mr. Pascal Meehan, Head of Faculty of Asset, and Dr. Francis Hardiman, Head of Department of Electrical and Electronic Engineering, have progressed to new roles in LIT and another institute of technology. I would like to thank them for their dedication to the faculty, and I wish them every success in their new ventures. Five staff members retired this year. Tony Wallace and Peter Ronan from the Department of the Built Environment uh, retired. I would like to acknowledge their years of service to Limerick Institute of Technology and I would like to wish them a happy retirement. Our faculty has exceptionally strong links with the construction, engineering, science and IT industries through the Limerick for Engineering and Limerick for IT initiatives, through student work placement, through providing bespoke programs for individual industries, through research partnerships, through its graduates, and the work experience of many of its staff. These links keep us informed about the requirements of new and well-established industries, so the skills and knowledge we impart in our programs are truly relevant. We appreciate the recognition given to this award ceremony by our industry partners, through their presence here today and their ongoing and very valued support for our programs. Today's graduates have the knowledge, skills and competencies to contribute actively to these industries. Career prospects are very good at present, so you can be assured of many opportunities to commence your career. On behalf of the staff, I would like to congratulate all of the graduates being conferred here today. You are graduating with qualifications which are highly regarded by industry, both here and abroad. These qualifications, which are accredited by the major industry professional bodies, and hence have considerable value added to them, will enable you to work throughout the world. Accreditation of our programs by professional bodies is highly valued by the departments, our staff and graduates. I wish to acknowledge the assistance that professional bodies have given in program accreditation and development through the provision of expert advice and exter external examiners over many years. Graduates, we have strived to prepare you to be capable and competent people who are proficient in your chosen disciplines. We expect that we will have given you the ability to look to the long term in terms of planning your career and to appreciate the value and need for further education and professional development. Not least, I wish to acknowledge the contribution of the academic, technical, administrative and support staff of both departments and their presence here today is an indication of their commitment, enthusiasm and dedication to their students. The staff work with and for our students and that makes all the difference to your learning experience here in LIT. 
I wish to congratulate them for their contribution in producing such good graduates, and I join them in saluting your achievements and in wishing you fulfillment in your working and professional lives. Thank you. I now call on the President of Limerick Institute of Technology, Professor Vincent Canaan, to formally confer the LIT awards on the graduates. Her Kyoni Institute, Bronam Dat Nak Tani, Her Oilamori Institute, A Tataris in Kagdan Shin, the Wanchamak. I was Aram Gokurfer and Ola Morishin and Malahar, Kunabara Horvardiv Goformul. On behalf of the Institute, I hereby confer awards on the learners of the Institute who have achieved the standard for those awards, and I ask that those learners be presented to me so that I may formally present them with their parchment. I now request the President, Professor Vincent Canaan, to present the parchments and invite the Head of Department of the Built Environment, Mr. Pat Gill, to announce the graduates. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Science in Construction Practice, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Carl Gath, in absentia. Nicole McMahon, Declan O'D. <clears throat> Ian O'Loughlin. <clears throat> Niall Pilkington. <clears throat> President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science in Construction in Site Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Shane Carroll. <clears throat> Ronan Delaney. Aaron Dunn. <clears throat> Brendan Heffernan in absentia. Declan Lockery in absentia. <clears throat> President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Arts in Interior Design and Technology. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Neve Conway. <clears throat> Patricia Curtin. Claire Kiley. <clears throat> Caitlin McDonnell. <clears throat> Matt
Melody Moyo. Tracy O'Reilly. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Michael Barry. <laughs> Dara Breen. <laughs> Ian Daly in absentia. Patrick Gilfoyle. Shane Maloney. <laughs> Timmy O'Connor. <laughs> Christopher Sibanda. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science, Honours in Civil Engineering Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Dominika Balcherzak. Gareth Cosgrove. <laughs> Ruigia Jing in absentia. John Kennedy. <laughs> Sylvia Kielak. Taig McCarthy. <laughs> James McInerney in absentia. Craig Mills. <laughs> Thomas O'Flaherty. Stephen Staunton in absentia. Wang Zhuang. <laughs> Zhuandu Yu in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science in Sustainable Building and Energy Engineering. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Armstrong Ikoru. <laughs> Aina King. Sean Ryan in absentia. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Property Valuation and Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Anne Marie Meehan. John O'Donoghue.
President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Construction Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Patrick Cusson in absentia. Connor Fahey. John Galvin. Luke Kennedy. Enigi Anson. In absentia. David Ryan in absentia. Singh Birinder. <laughs> Killian Swift O'Halloran. <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidates who has successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Energy Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Shane Finn in absentia. Gerard Moynihan in absentia. Damien Noonan. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Quantity Surveying. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Opiemi John Alaka. Chin Wei Yo. <laughs> Callan Clifford. <laughs> Brendan Egan in absentia. Hu Wei Tay. Paddy Morrissey. Robert Murphy. Christopher O'Kane in absentia. Daniel Starr. Pai Wenchin. <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of the Built Environment, and are worthy of the award of Master of Science in Quantity Surveying. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Edwin Becerra. <laughs> Daniel Blenkin. <laughs> Ahmed Benelhaj Dejelu. In absentia. Kevin Higgins. John Howard.
Jade Creel. Ellen Langley. Richard Mamfozel Rajan. Patrick McCarthy. Jared Nevin. Brendan O'Connor. Maria Anna Reikevart. Emmanuel Atta Siao. Weiji Tan. I now invite the Head of Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, Dr. Philip Ryan, to announce the graduates. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for coming. Um, President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Higher Certificate in Engineering in Agricultural Mechanization, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Aaron Ben. Daniel Boyle. Cahal Burke. Connor Burke. Sean Clear in Abstentia, and John Collins in Abstentia, and Jack Cotter in Abstentia. Uh, Eugene Courtney. Sean Cronin. Patrick Desmond. Jason Dooney. Jordan Drouth, that's in abstentia, excuse me. Paul Rigg Early, James Furlong, Stephen Hayden, Joseph Hegarty, John Hennessy, Aaron Kilgariff, Ronan Liner, Connor McGuire, Jack McKenna in Abstentia, John Murray in Abstentia, Brian Norris in Abstentia, Michael O'Connell, uh, Richard O'Keefe in Abstentia, Sean Sampson, Lawrence Shanahan, Paul Straw, pardon me, Paul Shaw, uh, Sean Tienan in Abstentia, Porig Walsh in Abstentia, Graham Wilkinson,
President, I present to you the following. President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering, and I request you to present their parchments to them. Uh, Sufyan al Shukali in abstentia, Hilal Atobi in abstentia, James Breen. Uh, Greg Collins in abstentia. Uh, Jamie uh, Coldidi in abstentia. Oshin Fitzgibbon. Aidan Graney in abstentia. Uh, Joseph Griffin. Dolcia Kuneska, Franz Lehiner in abstentia, Bill Lyons in abstentia, Simon Lysit, Ian McNamara. Paul Moisey in abstentia, Michael Maloney. Francis Maloney. Barry Morton in abstentia, Gerard Mulvihill. Brian Nash in abstentia, David O'Connell. Gordon O'Donovan, Gavin O'Leary, Ronan O'Shea in abstentia, Owen O'Sullivan, Garod Rice, Ian Sarsfield, uh, Marek Spiwakowski, <laughs> Edward Toomey, Mark Fahan. and Barry Walsh in abstentia. Uh, President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering Honours in Mechanical Engineering Facilities. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Garod Barrett. Gavin Brophy, Patrick Brosnan in abstentia, Connor Cleary, David Condren, Michael Cook, Kevin Donnelly in abstentia, uh, Owen Maher, Barry McMahon, Kevin Mulcahy, Jack Relahan.
Mark Stritch. Colin Timoney. Graeme Whelan. Uh, President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and are worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Road Transport Technology and Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Uh, Dara Donnelly Linehan. <laughs> Jacob Krychek. Connor McCarthy in Abstentia, Brendan Mee, Eric Morley, Jaden Murray, and Mikolai Stryker. Scott Toomey, and Alan Walsh in Abstentia. Uh, President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and a worthy of the award of Bachelor of Science Honours in Process and Engineering Management. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Maid Ali Mu Zaman in Abstentia, Bertina Sperkovas, <laughs> Dermot Begley, Adrian Cleary in Abstentia, Patrick Connolly, Patrick Dillon in Abstentia, uh, Dermot Farrell, Jared Fitzgerald, Andrew Halliday, uh, Jessica Ludic. <coughs> Andrew Kelleher, <laughs> Rafael Mamala, <laughs> Jared McCall, <laughs> Jeremiah Moran in Abstentia, Christopher N Noonan. Richard O'Connor in Abstentia, Glenn O'Donnell, <laughs> Stephen O'Donnell, <laughs> Shane O'Sullivan, <laughs> Liam O'Toole, Colin Ryan in Abstentia, uh, Lee Ryan, <laughs> Thomas Ryan in Abstentia, and uh, finally Dylan Skerritt. <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidates who have successfully completed courses in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and a worthy of the award of Bachelor of Engineering in Precision Engineering. And I request you to present their parchments to them. Patrick Daly.
David Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Colin Heffernan in abstentia. Uh, Kiran Mongan. <laughs> President, I present to you the following candidate who has successfully completed a course in the Faculty of Applied Science, Engineering and Technology, Department of Mechanical and Automobile Engineering, and is worthy of the award of Masters of Engineering by Research, and I present, and I request you to present his parchment to him. Sean Glynn. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Come now to the special awards ceremony for outstanding achievement and I call on the president to make the awards. The first of our special awards today is the Roadstone Wood Group Award presented by Vincent Canan of LIT. The Roadstone Wood Group Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science in Sustainable Building and Energy Engineering. And the award goes to Aina King. Next award is the Punch Consulting Engineering Award, presented by Aidan O'Connell of Punch Consulting. The Punch Consulting Engineering Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering. And the award goes to Michael Barry. Next award is the Aidan Feeney Perpetual Award, presented by Professor Vincent Canan of LIT. The Aidan Feeney Perpetual Award is for excellence on the subject Highway Engineering and Management Practice, on the Bachelor of Engineering in Civil Engineering. And the award goes to Timmy O'Connor. Our next award is the Chartered Institute of Building Award, presented by Rachel Corbally of CIOB. The Chartered Institute of Building Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Civil Engineering Management, and for excellence in the dissertation on the Bachelor of Science Honours in civil engineering management. And the award goes to Sylvia Kailak.
Our next award is the ACOM Award, presented by Conor McBrearty of ACOM. The ACOM Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Quantity Surveying. And the ACOM Award goes to Wenxin Pai. Our next award is the Linesight Award, presented by Aidan Walsh of Linesight. The Linesight Award is for excellence in the dissertation on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Quantity Surveying. And the award goes to Wenxin Pai. Our next award is the Society of Chartered Surveyors Ireland Award, presented by Mr. Carlo Hanrahan of Society of Chartered Surveys Ireland. The Society of Chartered Surveyors Ireland Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Property Valuation and Management. And the award goes to John O'Donoghue. Our next award is the Construction Industry Federation Award, presented by Ronan O'Brien of the Construction Industry Federation. The Construction Industry Federation Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Construction Management. And the award goes to Killian Swift O'Halloran. Our next award is the LIT Sports Award, presented by Professor Vincent Canaan. The LIT Sports Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Energy Management. And the award goes to Damien Noonan. Our next award is the Rogerson Redden and Associates Award, presented by Mr. Kieran Clahasy of Rogerson Redden and Associates. The Rogerson Redden and Associates Award is for excellence on the Masters of Science in Quantity Surveying. And the award goes to Tan Yi Jay.
Our next award is the Walls to Workstations Award, presented by Professor Vincent Canaan of LIT. The Walls to Workstations Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Arts in Interior Design and Technology. And the award goes to Patricia Curtin. So that was the last of our Built Environment Awards. We're now switching to the Department of Mechanical Engineering Awards. And the first award is the Farm Tractor and Machinery Trade Association Award, presented by Mr. Connor McGuinness. The Farm Tractor and Machinery Trade Association Award is for excellence on the Higher Certificate in Engineering in Agricultural Mechanization. And the award goes to Lawrence Shanahan. Our next award is the Costal Award, presented by Coleman Byrne. Coleman isn't here? No, okay. It will be presented by Professor Vincent Canaan. <laughs> the Costal Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering. And the award goes to Simon Lysett. Our next award is the STL Logistics Award presented by Professor Vincent Canaan. The STL Logistics Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Engineering in Road Transport Technology and Management. And the award goes to Eric T. Morley. Our next award is the Modular Automation Award, presented by Kieran Normoyle of Modular Automation. The Modular Automation Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Process and Engineering Management. And the award goes to Shane O'Sullivan. Our next award is the Precision Turned Parts Manufacturing Association Award, presented by Tom Collins of Stryker and John Devitt of PM PTMA. The Precision Turned Parts Manufacturing Association Award is for excellence on the Bachelor of Engineering in Precision Engineering. And the award goes to 
David Fitzpatrick. Our next award is the Molex Award, presented by Siobhan Keane of Molex. The Molex Award is for excellence in the dissertation on the Bachelor of Science Honours in Process and Engineering Management. And the award goes to Glenn O'Donnell. Our final award is the LIT Student of the Year 2018 President's Award. And this is a big deal award for us because it's for overall best academic performance in LIT in 2018. And the award goes to Shane O'Sullivan. We'll now have a short musical interlude. I now call on the President of Limerick Institute of Technology, Professor Vincent Canaan, to address you. I call you to ask and do arm of and show you how it's been long ago we left all the court article there. Fred, you're very welcome to LIT. Uh, and today, we are delighted to recognize you, our newest graduates. Today is a special day for you. It's a special day for your families gathered here. But it's also a very special day for LIT. Because these are the days that reveal to us the value of the work that everyone here has put in over the years. That's to you, the graduates, your families, and the staff of LIT. This is the one time of the year that we get together as a single community to recognize our own for the commitment, the ability, and indeed the perseverance you have shown in getting to this stage. So to the parents and the guardians and the spouses and the families of the graduates, I also say heartiest congratulations. You too are part of our community. And I'm sure there were times when you didn't think this day would ever come, but it's come and it's great to see it. 
Now, just in recognition of that, maybe the, the graduates themselves would stand up, face your families, and maybe give those families a well-deserved round of applause. So I'd ask you to stand up and applaud them. Not bad, not bad. <clears throat> now, you the graduates, you have received your education from an institution whose roots in technical and artistic education go right back to the foundation of the Limerick Athenaeum in 1856. You now join a long line of graduates who have gone before you to take their place in society and to those who have helped to mould that society. This is the proud legacy that you can take with you now. This is something that you can take great pride in. But today is a milestone for all of us. And you have received your education at an institution that puts its students at the heart of everything we do. This ceremony marks the transition point from your being part of our student community to being part of our graduate community the community of LIT graduates. That is something to be proud of for the rest of your lives. And I know the staff here are very proud of you, each and every one of you. I indeed am very proud of you. I hope you share that pride and that your families and communities share that pride too. But I'd also like to thank on your behalf, on behalf of the graduates, to thank all the staff of LIT who have helped you along the way. And a sincere thanks to all of you here today as well. So you graduate today knowing you have a good education, knowing you have a recognised and respected qualification. Your qualification is recognised internationally and employers recognise it worldwide. We develop our programmes with industry, communities, state agencies and others. And you will benefit from this, as indeed will you and in the audience, your families and your communities. Indeed we hope that you will change the economy and the state even itself. You're graduating into possibly the best economic situation that we have seen in this region for many years. We have just received the results of the Higher Education Authority's Graduate Employment Survey for 2017. This is a first destination for all our graduates from last year. And it makes very heartening reading for all of us here in the LIT community. 95% of last year's graduating class either went directly into employment or further study. 95%. You've got to think about that. Like, you know. That means that only 5% were looking for employment across all of the diverse programs that we run here in LIT. If you compare that to the national unemployment rate, youth unemployment rate, it still runs at 12% or so. So this is making a major impact. And it's not that people are going into poorly paid jobs in other parts of the world or in other parts of the country, that they have to emigrate in order to find employment. One third of those graduates from last year were on a salary of over 30,000 per year. The average was 26,000 across all our diverse programs. And three quarters of all of those graduates were working in Limerick, Clare, or Tipperary, essentially the Midwest region. Another 10% were working in the wider Munster region. So our graduates are getting well-paid jobs in this region, serving the companies that are so uh, prevalent in this, in this region. But results like this do not happen by accident. They happen because the staff of LIT work hard to deliver an education that makes you work ready and makes the LIT graduates plugged into this economy. This creates a virtuous cycle. You get good jobs, employers continue to invest here in the Midwest because you, the graduates, have the skills, the knowledge and the attitude 
that the modern workplace needs. You will become the leaders of tomorrow, developing further skills and abilities that will keep on generating more and more benefit for the economy and our society. It is really, really important for all of us here at LIT that we continue to do this and we take the kind of approach that we do. It's about awareness in our staff and a commitment to continuous improvement. It's about staff being allowed to do a great job. Because what we had to do last year or the year before to be successful may not be what we have to do next year or the year after in order to continue our success. And that means that we have to challenge ourselves every single day. It's about continuous improvement. There is no such thing as resting on our laurels if we want to sustain days like this. It means being agile and being very committed. And I can promise you that we will continue to do this. Because this is our choice, reflected in our strategic plan launched earlier this year, which puts LIT on a trajectory to become a technological university. But we will be a new kind of university. One, of course, that is ambitious, but one that sets its own targets. One that is underpinned by the values that one holds dear here amongst the staff. The most important being the support, the accessibility, equity, innovation, and excellence based on continuous improvement. These are the things that are leading to amongst other things, the good prospects for you, for your, our graduates, and the betterment of the society we all live in. But we must be supported by government to continue our work. Our sector is increasingly defined by what is known as the Hunt Report, which was published in 2011. It is the current blueprint for Irish third level education. It defines our funding and tells us that, amongst other things, the institutes of technology should merge, should face more international competition, should fundamentally change. But if 95% of our graduates are in employment or further study, if students are coming to us from very, very diverse backgrounds, if we are retaining more of those students in college, if we are feeding the industries of this region, if we are keeping people in this region, I want to know what we are doing wrong and why we must change so fundamentally. We work for you. We work for your communities, our regional economy and our society. We are delivering. And in that context, I believe that it is time to reflect on whether the Hunt Report still provides the right blueprint for our sector given where we are now. We now have a new Minister for Education and Skills. He's a Donegal man, so he must be very good. But I'm calling on the Minister at the start of his tenure to review the Hunt Report in light of the environment we find ourselves in today. The reality is that the challenges this sector faces, this sector faces are very different from when the Hunt Report was published. And many of the key elements in the report have been delivered. For example, in only two months' time, the Technological University Dublin will come into being, and that is the amalgamation of DIT, Tala and Blanchardstown. But when the Hunt Report was published, youth unemployment was just under 40%. Today it is about 12%. The country was in an IMF programme in 2011, and last month's budget saw a small surplus. We have to keep doing what we are doing and not be constrained by a policy that does not look fit for purpose for the country where the country is today. And from where I sit, the biggest challenge to us lies in a policy that was written in a different time for a different country. I wonder if there's a lack of understanding in government of what it is this sector actually does. Because if you understood this sector, you would fund it appropriately. The representative bodies for the Institute of Technology, called THEA, made a pre-budget submission that asked the government to enter into a partnership with us to generate the optimum return for the state on their investment in the Institutes of Technology. And this reflects one of the lessons we have learned, that partnership and planning 
benefit people. I chaired that the budget group, and I can tell you what we proposed was very simple. We're not looking for money just to expand and add to our prestige. We're looking for it to add to the well-being of our society. You invest in our facilities and our people, and we will pass that directly on to our students in such a way as the economy and the society will get a huge dividend. It's a win-win-win scenario. That's what I believe we need to do. Take a longer-term view. Plan properly. We can educate people in such a way as there will be a multiplier effect for everyone. But we need further investment, and we need it now. The bottom line is that we should be left free to do what we do best. Educate people in a way that fits your needs and the needs of our region. And a benefit to society, to you, your families and your communities, will get from that is quite extraordinary. So at the end of the day, it's a simple idea. It's a ripple effect. We just want the government to drop the pebble here in this part of the pond and we'll do the rest. Now you, the graduates, are now part of that movement. It's your day to celebrate, and there is much to celebrate. We're building a new campus in Kuna for engineering, as Maria has said. It'll be open next year. Sorry you didn't get to enjoy it, but maybe you'll come back. We are planning a new science and IT building here in Moilish, which will almost double our floor space. We have new sports facilities coming to various of our campuses. Of course, we're in Limerick. And I can't talk of celebration without mentioning Limerick's All-Ireland hurling winning team. We in LIT are particularly proud of the fact that no fewer than 10 current and former LIT hurlers were part of that panel. But that Limerick team started out with a plan. They all understood it. They bought into it. They shared a long-term vision and a purpose. And they realized that after hard work and dedication and they reached their ultimate goal. And with government, we can do that for the IoT sector. But speaking of achievement, our chair of our governing body for the last five years, Niall Green, has just stood down at the end of his term. I want to congratulate Niall and thank him. He did a great job, and he helped lead LIT through many challenges and great change. He was the chair here for the duration of your education guiding us through that difficult period, all the time with a steady hand that comes from wisdom and experience. I'm coming towards the end, you're all right now. I'm nearly exhausted myself. So you, our graduates, have now embarked on a life that is the result of the hard work you put in in an institution that cared for you and still cares for what you do. And to quote W.B. Yeats, Education is not the filling of appeal, but the lighting of a fire. And you, each and every one of you graduates, you now hold a flame. At some point, I would ask you to pass that flame on to someone else in your professional and personal life. And let them pass that flame on to somebody else. And pretty soon, we'll be lighting up the world around you in the years ahead. Everyone here in LIT wishes you all the very best. We hope you remember us fondly, and please stay in touch. Keep that flame lit and pass on the light. Congratulations from the heart to all of you. And I hope you've had the time of your lives. coming now to the end of our ceremony today and we'd like to thank you all for the manner in which you've participated in this conferring ceremony. We'd also like to invite the graduates and their guests to join us for some light refreshments afterwards in the green rooms which is the next building down here to your left.
I now declare this conferring ceremony closed. Please stand for the academic procession. And this time we invite the graduates to join the academic procession.